Okay, so this is the third video in the series of building a website from absolute scratch. Um, I'm just going to show you the um, the beginnings of where we're at with our website. So the first thing is we had um, a folder on our desktop, desktop called video website. We had two um, HTML files. That was video one was the first one and um, index two was our second video. So now we're onto our third video and we had three assets which were three different pictures um, of different cars. Now I'm just going to show you the first website just as an update. So this was page number one. We created this um, green background website with a heading, um, some yellow writing, a box, and then we created a um, button. We clicked the button and we went to this second page. And this is HTML um, two where we've got a uh, index two where we've got HTML page that has a full image that moves with the the um, so resizing of the screen and we've got a button that goes back okay so those two pages are linked to each other they go back and forward and that's what we've got so far okay so the idea is to continue to develop these web pages and make them better so the first thing I'm going to do is open my two documents in brackets so I've got my two documents here I'm going to control hit click I'm on a Mac and I'm going to open in brackets and brackets is the program we're using to write our code. Now remember, to write our web page. Now remember, we're doing this from absolute scratch. So we've typed everything in ourselves so far. We haven't used CSS yet. We're using a style within the website. And um, our page is at this stage, index one and index two. Now, as we did with the second video, we're gonna make a new page so that we're slowly showing our progressions all the way along. So I'm gonna click on um, the index two. In fact, I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm going to, oops, no, I'm not, I'm going to hold down my option key and I'm going to drag it down, it's option on a Mac, and then I'm going to let go and it'll make another copy. And this one will be called index 2, 2, so it's the second version of index 2. Now we don't want to do that, so I'm just going to click on it, I'm going to rename it, and we're going to call it index 3, right? We want to keep it as simple as we can while we're making these websites. So we've got index, which is our first page, first video. Index two, second page, second video. Index three, which is gonna be our third page and our third video. So I'm gonna jump back into brackets here and I'm gonna make sure that I open uh, the index three page as well from the same folder. So now really I can jump between each page if I need to, or I can go up to my view and change it to a vertical or a split view and I can drag one of them down. I can see two pages at the same time. Now, I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna leave it as a no split and I just want to look at page number three. Now at this stage, just a quick summary of what we've got in terms of our um, markup language here is we've been talking about our um, tags and that they come in pairs, that you have an open tag and then a closed tag. We've had the HTML which starts there and then closes down the bottom. We have the heading which starts here and then closes here and we've actually put some style inside of our heading and we've put a title inside of our heading. Um, then we have our body which starts here and it closes down here. Within that we've talked about our headings, our different heading sizes which are standard in all HTML. We've talked about our paragraphs, we've put in a couple of breaks and we've got down here a button. Now, the first thing we want to do is if we're adding a third page is we want to add another button. So I'm going to have to go down here and I'm going to have to put in a new anchor tag. The A tag means anchor tag, okay? So to put in another button, I'm actually going to copy that code exactly, Command C on a Mac, and I'm going to go to the end of it and I'm going to press Command V and I'm going to paste exactly the same section of code right next to it. Now, remember, when we set up this in the last video, we made sure that um, this section here, the class, button, button, was a rollover um, with a hover button that we took from W3 schools. But the class and the style of the button is not gonna change. Even if I've got two buttons on there, I want the two buttons to be the same. So we don't need to go back into the style sheets to change any of this. We want it to have the same style. We want it to look exactly the same. So we're leaving it as class button, button one. What we are going to do different though is we're going to put in a different href. We don't want both buttons to link to the same page. In fact, we want this button now to link back to page number two. And we need to rename some of these words. So we're going to change this first one to back. We're going to call this home. So that's going to be our index is our home page. We're going to call this one in here a link back to page two. Okay, so we're going to call that page two. So all I've done is add one extra button I've changed the link in here so that it goes to index2.html and I've renamed the word which will appear on the button. 
So let's preview that. Oh, remember, you've got to save, Command S to save. Preview that page. And here we have our full page um, image still with a background that's sizable. And we have two buttons. And the two buttons have the same rollover effect. They've got um, a yellow button with red writing with a white background when you're not on it. And we've got this writing here in the background and we've got some headings and it's starting to look okay. So we're starting to put some buttons in. Now, obviously this process of copying and pasting a button is how you would put multiple buttons in when you have different navigation on a website. You might have 10 different pages that you jump to. You could have 10 different buttons along the website. And we're actually gonna to get to that in just a moment. We're gonna go and um, have a quick look at how we do that. But right now, there's a couple of other things I would like to fix on this page. So if we have a look at this page, this writing in here that's orange, it's really hard to see. It's really hard to see on the background with the car going over it. And then in here, some of the colors are the same colors. So it's nearly impossible to read. So what we want to do is we want to put something into this paragraph to make it so that we can see that um, writing a little bit better. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about a div, which is a division on your page, where you're dividing your page up into a, um, different sections. And so we put this um, greater than sign, then we write div, and then we close it. And of course, it comes in the pairs. The tags always come in the pairs. We're going to copy that close tag. In fact, we're going to cut it, and we're going to paste it at the end of the paragraph. So now what I've done is I've created a new division and inside that new division is the paragraph of our writing. Now, I did that for a reason, and what I wanted to do is I want to put a border around this writing, and I want to actually close it in so that it doesn't stretch all the way across the screen, so that it's in a smaller, confined area. Okay, so I've created a div in here. So now I can go into my styles, and I could style how I would like that div to look. So I'm just going to write div. Now remember, it's not a class, so it doesn't need a full stop. It's just um, a div. So I'm just going to put the div there, my curly brackets. And I want to define how it's going to look. So I'm going to say I want it to be a width of 50% of the page. I don't want it stretching across the whole page. I only want it to be 50% of the page. And if you remember from the second video, we already aligned everything on the page to the center. That's this section here. So this div will be 50% of the width of the page, but it will be aligned from the center outward. So it'll be 25% either way from the exact center of the page. So I put in my width of 50%. Then I said to you that I would like to put in a border. So I click the word border and I want my border to be one pixel in width. So it's the thickness of the line that's going to go around the outside. That's the one border. I want the line to be solid and I want the actual line to be black. Then I put my semicolon at the end. So now I've done my border. So I've First of all, define the size of the box, of this division box, I've just defined the size of it. Then I've defined the line that's gonna go around the outside. And I just wanna make sure that within the box, the margin is equal all the way around. So that the text is spaced correctly inside the box all the way around. And so now what I've done is I've put a margin on the inside that's automatic to make sure that it's exactly the same all the way around. And this is my div in my style sheets and this is my div down here defining this little section of text as a division of the web page. So I'm just going to save that then we can go back to our preview and here we have it it has changed already and I think it looks really great right so we've got this white line that goes around the outside or the black line that goes around the outside we've got the text all fitting into the middle it doesn't go right out into the edges of the page so the div actually looks pretty good I've got it you know looking pretty much exactly how I want to have it right there. Okay, I still can't read it perfectly. So one of the things I could do is I could put a background color inside that div. Okay, so while I'm still in my style up here, I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna write background color, right? So background color, so the background color of that box. Now I know that I've got yellow writing on there and I'm trying to think of a great color that would work. Later I might wanna change the writing to black. So I'm just gonna put a white background in actually. I'm just gonna put a simple white background in behind my text, I'm going to save my file, and then I'm going to have a look at that. And there you go. So now I've got a white background in behind my text. My text is easy to read. Problem is, the image is supposed to be the star of the show. And if I put, if your screen's this big, we're sort of killing that car image. We're not really seeing it the best way that I'd like to see it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drop the opacity of that white. So I'm just going to write opacity. And I'm going to make that opacity 60%. So 0 0.6. And then I'm just going to put semicolon, right? So I've dropped it down to 60% opacity, which is that white background. I'm dropping that down. So now if I go and look, I need to save my file, go in. Now the background is 60%. In fact, everything inside that box is now 60%. So you can actually see the image um, through the box, right? Which is through the background, which for at this stage, that's exactly what I want to do. Now, normally you want the writing to be 100% and then the background to be 60%. Um, uh, I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in our video. But for this stage, this is what I want to get to. This is where I want to be, where I can see my box and I can see my image even scaling through the background of my box. That's, that's the first thing that I want to do. And really what we're doing is introducing this division, this division into your page. Okay, now we have added two buttons here and we've got the home page. I'm just going to click on this and go back to index one. Then we've got, we click on that and we go to the next page which takes us to index two. And now we're, oh, we haven't got anything to get us to index three. Okay, so back on those other two pages, I would have to go back to index two and I would have to add a page in, uh, button in here, same as we did before, copy and paste. And this time, oh, I made a little mistake there. Let's undo that. Right, I need to copy everything, including the A for anchor. Copy that, get to here, paste. Right, now we need one that's going to jump to page three. So I'm going to rename this to page three. And I'm going to change my index to index3.html and I'm going to save that command S. Now I'm also going to copy that exact same link. I'm going to say copy. I'm going to go back to my first page and I'm going to put the same button on there as well. So now all three pages should have links to page three. So let's go right to the very start. Index. Let's preview that page. There it is right there. It has next page, which would be page two, and then it has a link to page three. And if I hit that, it'll take me to page three. Page three jumps me back to the home, or page three jumps me back to page two, right? Page two, I can go back to the home, or I can jump to page three. And obviously you're gonna rename these buttons correctly, all right? Now, let's say we wanna have, um, say, four or five buttons along the top here, uh, four or five buttons here, but we do, we want them along the top and we want them up over here at the top. How are we going to do that? So the first logical way that you would do it, I'm just going to jump to page three, the first logical way you would do it is you would cut those, just go command X to cut those out, you would go up to the top of your body on your page here and you would go paste them there and now I've essentially just moved them all above everything else. So I hit Command S, go to my page, refresh this page, and look, there you go. There's my two buttons at the top of the page, okay? So that's the easiest way to do it. But it's not necessarily the best way to do it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to whack a return in here so that I can see the two buttons underneath each other so that I know I've got two buttons. Now, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to click in here and I am going to make a new div. Right, a new division on the page. Oops, a new div on the page, division on the page. Right, right there. And then I'm going to copy the other tag, Command X, cut it from there, and I'm going to paste it. In fact, I'm going to paste it underneath. Right, Command V. Now I've put a new, I've made this into a division. Okay. Now what should happen is I should be able to move that division anywhere that I like on the screen so that it's placed in the correct position, right? So that's pretty important. I want to be able to place it where I want to place it on the screen so that I know where, that, where those set of buttons are going to be. Now, if we go and look at this right now, one of the problems is that I've already defined in the style what the division should look like. It should have a white background with opacity and a border around it. Now, I don't want that for the buttons, but I've kind of got, let's just refresh this page. That's what I've got now. I've got this, because because we've designed this div down here, now we've got the same impact on this div up here. So I don't want to do that. So 
what I want to do is not have a style for the divs because we use lots of divs. When you build a website, you have lots and lots of different divisions, right? So you don't actually want to style the div. You want to style it individually in its own way. So the way that we can do that is inside this first div here, I'm going to write class equals and then put two sets of inverted commas and I'm going to say that this class is going to be my um, writing. So I'm going to call it writing, okay? So now instead of having the word div there, I'm going to make that a class by putting a full stop and then I'm going to write writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, writing. Okay, now I'm going to save that. Now if I go and preview my page, Now, we still have that impact down here because this is now a class and it has that white background that we wanted it to, but the div up here hasn't been impacted. The div up here is actually okay. So even though we've got two things called div on the same page, this one has a style to it and this one doesn't. Now, I do want to do stuff with this one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a class in here and I'm going to call this class um, header or uh, I'm going to call it head BTN. So it's going to be head buttons, right? Head BTN, that's what I'm going to call it. And then I'm going to go up here into the style and I'm going to give this some of its own style. Now remember, it's not the div that we're styling, it's now the class. So I have to put full stop head BTN, right? So that means that's what I'm now styling in here. And I want my buttons at the top of this page to be over on the left hand side over here. That's where I want them to be, okay? So now I'm gonna go head, I'm gonna have um, position, and I want the position to be absolute. I do not want the position to change. I don't want it to move around the website. I want it to be absolutely stuck exactly where I tell it to be. And the position I want it to be is on the left hand side of the screen at the top, and I want that to be 50, uh, say pixels from the edge of the page, semicolon, command S, save that. Let's go back, let's ref oh, and it's already done it for me. So now you can see my buttons are in a div. The div is called header BTN, which is the class of it. The buttons are up in the top left hand corner. When I resize my page, everything else can move. See the heading moves, the text in the middle moves, everything moves except my buttons. My buttons are fixed in a fixed position, in an absolute position, 50 pixels from the left-hand side of the screen. And in fact, you can actually fix it more precisely than that if you put position from the top as well. So you could go from the top, how many pixels down, and you could position it absolutely where you want it to be. Now, that's where we're gonna stop for this video. For the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and address this writing inside of here. We're going to add a whole group more buttons here. We're going to go back to page one and two, and we're going to fix the buttons in here. And we're also, for the next video, is we're going to start having a look at CSS, how to do all these styles in one um, file, rather than having different style sheets in every single one of the files, different styles in every single one of the files. We're going to make it CSS, okay? So that's the next video.